Hey beautiful people, welcome back to another video. I realise there are actually meals that I eat every single week, especially when it's cold. You know I only eat food that's damn good, tasty, delicious, but also I'm not the kind of person that's gonna spend three hours in the kitchen to make something that takes 15 minutes to eat. So yeah, all of these meals taste bomb and they're very easy to make. Of course, they're 100% vegan. Any specific items that I use will be linked down below along with the measurements, instructions, ingredients. I really hope you enjoy the food. So this first recipe is my pesto baked high protein pasta mix and it's honestly the most simple and satisfying meal ever. You can really use any veggies that you like or you just have lying around. I'm using some mushrooms, baby sweet corn, zucchini and sweet red bell pepper. Put some water on to boil for the pasta and then I'm dicing up everything into bite sized chunks. For the pesto, you can use red or green, just make sure it's a vegan one. This day, I used a red tangy tomato one, which was absolutely delicious. Put the veggies in a large mixing bowl and then smother with a whole jar of pesto. Always make extra whenever you're roasting up veggies for snacks and stuff, if you know what I mean. Toss so that everything is coated really well onto a lined baking tray and then into a hot oven for 20 to 25 minutes until everything is soft and slightly caramelized. I'm choosing to use red lentil pasta to make this a very filling high protein meal, but you can really use any pasta of your choice. Mix the pasta and the veggies together in a big bowl and toss really well so that the sauce from the veggies coats every strand of pasta. I always add greens to my main meals so I'm just throwing in some fresh rocket or arugula, a good squeeze of fresh lemon juice and toss again. Obviously this needs a nice drizzle, or rather a lake, of good runny liquid gold tahini and then it's ready to be applied to face. This mix is also really tasty as a cold pasta salad so if you have extra just keep it in the fridge ready for snacks o'clock. Okay so this next recipe is kind of a play on avocado toast, avocado toast, Although it's actually nothing like avocado toast. There's just toast and avocado involved. But just go with the flow and trust me that this is the most delicious meal ever. I'm very picky about the bread I use and this was a nice fresh sourdough loaf. I love sourdough, just can't get enough of it. I'm steaming up lots of greens to go with this so I have some tender stem broccoli, peas and kale. And you want to steam them just until they're slightly tender but still with a bit of bite to them. Don't overcook as you want them to still have that vibrant bright green colour. And of course I'm toasting the bread. I feel like people who make avocado toast or anything similar with untoasted bread should be shot. You want that crunchy base rather than sogginess, if you know what I mean. When the greens are ready, throw them into a large mixing bowl along with some good creamy avocado. I'm using a whole one as always. And I'm giving this a spritz of coconut aminos which really adds such a beautiful sweet and salty flavor to the mix. I smother the toast with hummus and I'm talking a nice thick layer. The more the better when it comes to hummus. I don't think anyone can dispute that. And then top the toast with the mix of greens. Uh, I'm actually salivating whilst editing this. I topped one half with tahini, obviously, and then the other half with some sweet, thick balsamic glaze, which really takes this to the next level. I eat this meal or something very similar multiple times a week, sometimes for breakfast, lunch, or a lazy dinner, and just like that, happily apply to face. On to something a lot more comforting. This is my sweet potato, red lentil and coconut spiced curry. It's the perfect one pot meal for when you need something quick, hearty and warming. Start by dicing up a large white onion.
Peel and dice a few sweet potatoes. You don't have to peel them, and actually the skin is my favorite part. But for some reason on this day I just did. You can also make this recipe with pumpkin, parsnips or carrots, or any other root veggie for that matter. Fry the onions in a little olive oil, or of course you can just use water if you prefer oil free. For the spices, I'm using cumin, garlic granules, sweet smoked paprika, and cinnamon. Fry the onions for another couple of minutes, and then throw in the sweet potato and toss it so that all of the potatoes get coated in the spices and everything is just mmm. Then I'm adding in one cup of red lentils, a can of full fat coconut milk, and some veggie stock for extra flavor. Stir this around and let it simmer for about 15 minutes or until the sweet potatoes are nice and soft. For a finishing touch, I added some fresh parsley, but it's also really delicious with cilantro or even fresh dill. The flavor in this mix is honestly out of this planet. Okay, so on to something sweet. I eat this yogurt bowl or some kind of similar variation at least four times a week, sometimes for breakfast or sometimes for dessert, depending on what toppings I'm using. I'm using some plain soy yogurt as the base, but you can really use any plant yogurt of your choice. This actually works even better with thick, creamy coconut yogurt. I'm adding in one scoop of the limited edition gingerbread spice raw vegan protein powder from Vivo Life, which is hands down the best protein powder I've ever tasted. So if you wanna try it, you better hurry up as it's not gonna be here forever, but I can assure you that the flavor is Bomb. Use a whisk to mix the protein powder in really well, and if you aren't as stupid as me, then you'll use a bigger bowl for mixing, so that you don't get protein powder flying all over your kitchen as I did, as I always do. For the toppings, I always add a lot of fresh fruit. Persimmon are my favorite fruit ever, and when they're in season, I just go crazy on them, so I'm dicing up a nice, juicy, sweet one. Mmm, look at that deep orange color, you know that's a sweet one. Crumbling over some Biscoff cookies, which have a beautiful gingery spice kind of flavor. On this particular day, I was making it as a dessert bowl, hence the cookies. Although I'm not saying I wouldn't eat cookies for breakfast, because you know I would. Also adding some diced ripe banana for extra sweetness, and then giving it a good drizzle of salted peanut butter. Peanut butter. Everything needs a finishing drizzle of nut butter or tahini. You know what I'm saying? And finally, let me show you how to make the perfect Buddha bowl. I eat bowls like this literally every single day when I'm at home, just with different toppings. Every Buddha bowl needs a starch element, and right now I'm obsessed with these funny looking pumpkins, which are really sweet and starchy. They're also extremely hard to cut. As you can see here, I'm having an arm wrestle with it. But I have realized that the harder they are to cut, the more starchy and dense they are. So it's worth the effort. Into a hot oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. And while that's cooking, we can get on with the other elements of the bowl. I always start with a big base of greens, so here I have a couple heads of romaine and also some dark leafy greens which just came in a mix. The more greens the better, always, 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 always. And I genuinely just enjoy eating lots of refreshing, crunchy, bitter greens with most of my main meals. For the toppings, I'm adding some steamed edamame beans for protein, sun-dried tomatoes, which give a beautiful tangy sweetness, some pickled red cabbage, sorry, cabbage, some thinly sliced white onion for a bit of sharpness, the roasted pumpkin, obviously some avocado, avocado, because you can't ever have any kind of salad bowl without it. It should actually be illegal. A good dollop of hummus, and then as always, a lake of liquid gold.
And that, my friends, is what you call a proper bomb satisfying Buddha bowl. Anyways, guys, as always, I'm sending you all so much love, and I'll see you on the next video. Laters.